Right, hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So we have done exactly half of the 7.4 guides and it's time to carry on with 7.44. And as always, for the ones of you that are more impatient or in a rush or just want to take this opportunity to take a screenshot to refer to later, then here is a short write-up of every single path and kind of my suggestions for it, some strategies and stuff like that. So you can take a screenshot of it, but don't worry, I will be bringing it back through on the video to refer to anyhow. And here are the boss fights and the options for the boss fights. And obviously a quick disclaimer, these aren't the only options and this is just my personal guide and my thoughts. I can't possibly see all the interactions and, and there might be plenty other champions that do just fine. Either way, let's start with the path as always on the top left side, which is Eat Crow, which basically gives all the science attackers immunity to nullify, which is extremely important because if you do get stuff nullified on you, you're going to be taking a lot of damage and the nodes will be giving buffs to you with the bait and switch thing. But realistically, the only other relevant node here is the Hazard Shift Incinerate Poison, which is something to keep in mind for you. So ideally, you want to have a Science Incinerate and Poison Immune Champion, or Pseudo Immune Champion in this case as well, because Red Hulk absolutely trashes this entire lane, or as I did in my clear, I used Anti-Venom, and Anti-Venom as a 5-star went through this entire lane extremely well. So there we go. We have Anti-Venom and Red Hulk as the best options. But other than that, you also can very well work with one of the two immunities and gen then just wait out the other part of it. So here, for instance, any science poison champions, which there are plenty of, as all of the Hulks are poison immune and She-Hulks and, you know, Overseers and so on and so forth, or incinerate immune science champions like Human Torch and Void, uh, also will do extremely well. Additionally, if you really want to be of the revolutionary nation and completely bypass the suggestions of Kabam, High Sig Angela should be able to take this lane as well. I haven't tested it out myself. However, especially with Odin pre-fights, you would have plenty of buffs to make sure nothing gets nullified and you would also be shrugging off damage over time effects pretty much instantly. So you can bypass Hazard Shift and all those nullification nodes. Omega Sentinel also has immunity to nullify and pseudo poison immunity. You would still need to keep an eye out for incinerate immunity, but those two champions should also be able to work outside of science class. Right, that's about it. As long as you do bring in science champion with one of those two immunities, you're going to have a good time because you're going to be gaining furies and you're just going to be having tons of damage and plenty of fun. Right, let's move on to the next lane, which is Superiority, Top Dog, Cut Your Losses, and Grunge Tax. Whenever a defender is afflicted with a debuff, 100% chance to inflict non-stacking power burn, and then with that power burn, you're basically gonna start getting few debuffs. Science Ascendancy, so it means science and skill champions gain bonuses, and Aspect of Evolution, so you don't want to stretch these fights out too long. So this is ideally meant to be science and skill class, so you do get the Superiority, Top Dog, and do get the fury damage increase and you just blitz down the opponents like realistically you can use pretty much anyone in here you can just bring in your stronger champions so on and so forth because the only node that actually does anything meaningful is the aspect of evolution because those power burns are extremely Im important <laughs> not potent they don't do too much but if you do play with the grudge tax by using science and skill champions, then you will be getting significant damage increase. That means that Kingpin, Molman, Shang-Chi, Nick Fury, Mr. Fantastic, Immortal Abomination, Void, Joe Fix, I Hulk, Torch, so on and so forth. Basically, the best of the champions, either one of the two classes has to offer. Pick, you know, skill champions against uh, science champs and pick science champions against mystic champs. And you will do just fine with pretty much any and all of them. You're going to get significant damage bonus. Now we're moving on to Paradox buffs. Whenever the attacker gains a buff, they also gain one Paradox charge. And uh, that typically means, ironically to the name of the node, you want to avoid champions that gain buffs by themselves. Because if you do gain too many buffs, your Paradox charge will explode. So whenever you see Paradox debuffs, you should know that you probably want champions that don't inflict many debuffs. Whenever you see Paradox buffs, you should know that you want champions that do not have many buffs. 
Additionally, with the Paradox node, we have 30% increase to special attack rating per Paradox charge. So you, you again get some damage increase. This Quantum Power basically does nothing because you can switch it off very quickly and prey on the Feeble. You know, it's not really going to come into play much unless you really mess up at times. And uh, that means, again, that you can use pretty much whoever you want except champions that how many buffs. So bring in your kitties, clairs, dooms, molemans, nick furies, ghost, warlocks, nulls, eye bombs, ralks. Basically all the strongest champions in game that do not inherently how many buffs in their kit. You can still have a buff or two here and there. It's not end of the world. Just make sure you're not using champs like Angela and Venom and stuff like that because then it's going to be very hard to manage them and you're going to have them explode. When it comes to fights themselves, there is the spider ham, which, you know, ideally you do want to counter. You can bring in, I don't know, Archangel or something. And uh, Miles Morales, just don't use special attacks against that guy. Or bring in a miss counter. That's about it. Right, let's move on to the next lane, starting with Cyclops. And that's Power Shield, Recharge, and uh, Enhanced Parry and Spite Node. So, when you see Power Shield, most of the time, just bring your Ghost and go brrr. Right, Power Shield, uh, yeah, you can have some filthy ghost fun, but on top of it, because of Spite and because of the how you are going to be gaining power through recharge, through parries, um, you can bring in power control champions or champions that reverse opponent's power gain and basically turn Spite in your favor, and then you're going to have absolutely nothing to worry about at all. So, again, Ghost, Dr. Doom, Void, Mr. Fantastic, Spider Ham, Spider-Man 99, Magic, Corvus Workwell, Hawkeye, Flair Voyant, Yellow Jacket. All of the champions that has access to Petrify or uh, Wither debuffs or any other so forms of power control will be extremely safe. That's not to say that you can't just use pretty much any champion and work with Spite, but you know, opponents AI can often get iffy and if they do get to level 3 then it could hurt. So having some sort of way to deal with that spite would be ideal. And in case of Ghost, just bring in Hood Synergy and tank those level 3s. No big problem. Moth to the Flame. This was actually a very fun lane. And uh, Matador made it quite fun as well. Power buildup and aggressive are basically relevant nodes. So you're going to have to work with Matador, gaining a bar of power when opponent throws a special attack, but not gaining any other power through basically other means. But typically, since you do give opponent more power than you gain yourself by hitting them. Uh, that just ends up with you getting more power quicker. Uh, Matador is actually quite player friendly node in most of the cases. And Moth to the Flame is just a node that entices you to be aggressive. Because whenever you strike the opponent, you gain a charge. If you throw a special attack and you have more than 10 charges, 10 of them are consumed and you get 10% fury. So you basically get 100% fury for 10 seconds, but uh, if you do not have any fervor charges remaining, then you get degen inflicted upon yourself. So that means before every single time you throw a special attack, you kind of on average need to land 10 hits on the opponent. Also keep in mind, if you're going to be staying away from opponent, those charges will start to expire. So what are the best ways to deal with these conundrums? Well, it's quite simple. If you use champions that how several hits on their combos, then you're going to be j gaining your charges very quick. Or if you use just champions that generally have very aggressive playstyles, you will be just fine as well. So increased combo champs, Black Widow, Deadly Origin, Stealthy, so and so forth. Champions that have six and seven com hits on their combos work well. And then alternatively, I personally just used Corvus and it worked out as a charm also, because why not? Matador makes it quite easy to gain power. I could get Plenty of Corvus charge early on that lane. Obviously, you can just go with Kitty, Hercules, Aegon, Nick, or Molman, or whoever, and you'll still do absolutely fantastic there. There's not too much to worry. It's not a hard lane. And uh, last lane here, we have Yellow Jacket, which is Paradox Block, and uh, Entropic Prowess, which again increases your special attack damage. Then we have also Counter Strike and Prey on a Week. Prey on a Week is the node that can catch you here if you do not consider it because if you bring in champions with plenty of buffs when they do expire opponents are going to gain a huge chunk of power so you do want to avoid champions that have a lot of buffs 
Ironically, I think Paradox block with Entropic Prowess is the only node that actually kind of entices you to bring in champions that do what's said on the node. Uh, with Paradox block and Entropic Prowess nodes combined, you can quite safely use parry heavy champions because to get rid of your Paradox charges, you want to knock down the opponent and whenever you parry, you gain a Paradox charge. So parry heavy gives you one charge, takes away one charge. Perfect. You want to start every fight by just parrying like four times or five times and then you can just go parry heavy for the rest of the fight and you're going to be fine there because you're going to be managing the charges automatically by doing that and as the champ options go it's fairly free to be honest uh, just no real buff heavy champions due to that uh, node that i mentioned earlier uh, but use your aas apox clairs kingpin mole sorcerer supreme omega Joe fix it Hawkeye, Massacre, some other parry heavy champions that do not have many buffs on them. Additional note that I do want to mention for this lane in particular is the fact that there is Agent Venom and uh, Elsa Bloodstone and Vision Arcus. So packing Magneto House of X is an excellent idea because that would ensure that your stuns stick to these exactly three fights. So you can bring in Magneto House of X, use the pre-fight for Agent Venom, pre-fight for Else, and pre-fight for Vision Arcus, just to make those fights easier for yourself. And uh, yeah, that should work like a treat. Right, now the boss fights, the final boss fights. So let's start with the Annihilus. The Annihilus has a node that works basically on how you dash backwards and forwards, and ultimately you will be getting a significant increase in damage, but also he's going to be spending significant of time in the fight unblockable once you get past 100. So with that, you can obviously just use Miles Morales. Because <laughs> uh, once you make, get him unblockable, if you play smart, he's going to stay unblockable for the entire fight, and Miles can, you know, cheese it at that point. It's not also as parry vulnerability movable object but you know none of the stuff really does anything aside from this odometer um, important to note that if you have magneto house of x pre-fight available to you then you can safely stun annihilus and he will not you know even if it's going to be obliterate strike even if it's going to play stifle on you your passive stun will stick so that's quite useful knowledge to have in general whenever facing annihilus that uh, White Magneto pre-fight can work an absolute charm. Additionally, it's an Annihilus. You can use your Cosmic, your Mystic Champions, Doom, Diablo, Claire, whoever you want. And uh, also, a lot of people don't really know that this game treats Annihilus's Cosmic Rod kind of like an armor break. And whenever you do armor break him, then he does lose his Cosmic Rod. So, for instance, Corvus will work just fine as well. Moving on to the next boss, Mojo, and uh, Mojo is kind of frustrating a bit because of Oscillate. I always really hate Oscillate. Now, no surrender is here to help you because it can mitigate the degen damage that you will be getting from Mojo up until 90%. And then if you knock the Mojo down, you're basically going to be converting the de degen damage back to Mojo. But this subterfuge block and bubble shield make things harder because subterfuge block gives you a weak tiny fury buff every time you parry for 10 seconds and obviously if aura is active that will end up triggering those auras but still in general due to this node no surrender and in order to take the most benefit from it you want to always stay below a bar of power and basically throw your level one as quickly as you get it so torch still works fantastic here magneto can put in work just make sure not to charge up your prowesses uh, basically till you are at the level 3 and he does not have his aura active because if you do get those temporary prowesses then you're going to be in trouble basically if you know how to use Magneto against Mojo then good, use him if not, then be careful and you'll learn uh, then we have Void, Mr. Negative Spider-Man 2099, obviously no buffs at all very great option here then we have Nick Fury, can do this fight reasonably well also and we have Mr. Fantastic, because why not? He's an absolute darling too. Largely because of that No Surrender node, it's really not that bad of a fight. And then we have Super Scroll. Now, initially this fight kind of seemed annoying because of the bullet time, 
But if you learn to work with this node, you can actually just cheese nuke him down. I typically used iHulk for this, but I'm sure there are several other champions that could do just as fine of a job. Uh, the base idea is that you do want to parry and reparry as much as you can, because every time you do parry, you gain an away charge. I mean, he shrugs off that stun immediately, but there's an away charge placed on him. And then if you do trigger dex, he gets stunned for every away charge for 1.5 seconds. If you get to about 10, 12 away charges, you can just nuke him down with eye hulk. But that's the point is you want to parry and reparry him. Don't hit him whilst he has any away charges at all. And then just dash back, trigger the bullet time, passive stun and nuke him down. Alternatively, you can just treat him like stun immune. If you do not parry him, he's not going to be getting his away charges. And if he's not getting his away charges, you know, there's nothing that much else to this fight, aside from feats of power and steady perseverance. So you have two options. Work with bullet time, parry, reparry, trigger decks, and then nuke him down, or treat this fight as a stun immune super scroll. That being said, best options, I would say, are Tigra, Doctor Doom, Symbiote Supreme, and then again, the cheese method that I mentioned previously. Right, that is about it. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. We have two more left, 745 and 746, and then we're going to be done with this. Hope these are helping you. Before I finish, I will again drop this right up down here, because why not? And then the boss options. You can take your screenshots and uh, see you next time. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the 